Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Paul Joskow, uh, and uh, I'm going to speak for several minutes uh, about U.S. electricity markets uh, and the handbook uh, on electricity markets, which will be uh, published later this year. Uh, the uh, let me start with this picture of the United States and uh, and Canada. Uh, I put the both together because uh, Canada and the U.S. are have uh, integrated synchronized electric power systems, uh, except for Quebec, uh, and uh, they they operate from a electrical and reliability perspective uh, together. Uh, the uh, you'll notice uh, the U.S. market, the U.S. system uh, is still a, has a mixed industry structure, uh, and I, I divide the structure into three categories. The first are the restructured uh, and organized markets, uh, uh, where there's been vertical separation, uh, and uh, uh, organized wholesale markets have uh, have developed, and that would be here, uh, New England. Uh, PJM, Texas for sure, uh, and uh, uh, and California. Though California is a little bit different, uh, uh, Alberta also has such a system. Uh, the second category I would call partially restructured, uh, along with organized wholesale markets, uh, and those would be uh, uh, MISO, the Mid Continent ISO, and Southwest ISO, where uh, they've retained. Uh, partially regulated vertically integrated utilities, uh, which have various uh, uh, requirements to build or buy generating capacity, but that participate uh, in an ISO managed uh, organized uh, set, of, uh, set of markets. Uh, you can think of it, I guess, as a very sophisticated power pool uh, from the old days, but uh, I, I think the takeaway is it's an organized market uh, and it, uh, 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 there still is a regulatory backstop in terms of, of covering capital costs. Uh, retail competition has not been a big sell in the US. This is just a map of the, the states where there, where there is retail competition. And uh, they're mostly in the Northeast and in Texas, which has a, uh, a, a advanced retail competition system. And the states where it's limited are actually uh, quite very limited. And I'm not going to talk about retail competition. I, I think it's more important than some people think because in the other states uh, where there is not retail competition, uh, and in California where there's some retail competition, load serving entities, primarily distribution companies, continue to have resource adequacy, long term planning, and uh, other obligations that uh, they do not have in the fully restructured systems. Uh, and then there are portions of the US uh, in the West and in the Southeast, where there really has been no restructuring in the, in the grander scheme of things. They're vertically integrated utilities. Uh, they're taking more advantage of opportunities to buy and sell in the wholesale market of independent power producers. Uh, uh, there have been proposals uh, in the Southeast to create a, a formal energy imbalance market. And there is a formal energy imbalance market in the West, but there's no ISO uh, and the, the markets are not organized like the ISO markets. So let me turn to the ISO markets uh, in the Northeast, uh, in, in Texas or ERCOT, which is about 90% of Texas uh, and, in, uh, and in California. Uh, these markets, uh, the design is, I would say, based on around models of optimal investment, optimal operations along an economic dispatch curve and pricing for systems that are dominated by dispatchable generation. And, and in the handbook, uh, my paper with uh, Thomas Olivier Lietoire, uh, Lietoire uh, uh, discussed that theory. And the basic design, and it's fairly similar across the ISOs, is integrated day ahead in real time markets for energy and ancillary services uh, operated by the ISO. And, and, and this is different from Europe, uh, where uh, the, uh, the day ahead market and the real time operations are separated. Uh, the basic principle that's used in all of these markets is a security constrained bid based dispatch system, uh, yielding a bid based dispatch, uh, bid, bid, uh, an offer based dispatch curve, and locational marginal prices. Uh, there are price and offer caps uh, in all of the uh, ISO market. 
And there's also some form of capacity remuneration mechanism, whether it's a capacity market or as an ERCOT, use of the operating reserve demand curve to build scarcity prices under certain conditions into the energy market, or in California where the load serving entities have resource adequacy requirements and, and have to contract for enough capacity to meet uh, some, some kind of reserve margin target. And then behind the scenes, there are market-based hedging contracts, uh, long-term PPAs uh, uh, that, that have emerged uh, both with, uh, uh, with load serving entities, but increasingly also with, uh, with corporate uh, buyers who have made commitments to, to decarbonize their systems. And those would be companies like Google and Microsoft and, uh, and Apple and Walmart uh, and others. Uh, Frank Wolock's paper in the handbook discusses wholesale market design in, in general, uh, and, and he's also quite expert on, on the California market. Uh, Bill Hogan's chapter discusses PJM, and Ross Baldick et al. discusses uh, ERCOT, uh, but I want to remind people their paper was written before the blackouts in February 2021, uh, although it's, it's quite an interesting chapter because they get into some of what I'll call the, the Texas ideology and politics, which is uh, something I think you've all been reading about recently. Uh, the ISOs also have transmission planning responsibilities. And I think this is a somewhat less happy story. Uh, those responsibilities have gradually changed over time. First, they were just supposed to plan for, to deal with reliability issues uh, and identify transmission upgrades that were, uh, were needed for reliability purposes. Uh, then uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission uh, in, allowed and encouraged them to take market efficiency into account. That meant transmission enhancements that would uh, uh, reduce uh, congestion uh, by, by enough to more than pay for the transmission investment. Then that, the more recently, uh, there's an effort to uh, encourage interregional transmission. That means transmission between uh, ISOs. Uh, and between uh, uh, wholesale planning areas, which include portions of the whole country. More recently, there's been a, a push towards competitive procurement systems and merchant, invest, merchant generators uh, are starting to come into the market. I think not with the, uh, un, under a system which was originally contemplated 20 years ago, but adopting the US natural gas pipeline model, uh, which is based on, uh, on uh, uh, delivery con long-term delivery contracts with the, uh, with shippers or with or with generators, and integrating those systems is uh, has been uh, has been challenging. Uh, current issues, uh, I think, in the U.S. and elsewhere, uh, which is the second part of the handbook. Uh, wholesale markets are are adapting or trying to adapt to integrate deep penetration of intermittent wind and solar generation plus storage. And here, I think new models are required. The, the traditional voiture turvy uh, model uh, turned into a bid-based rather than a marginal cost-based model uh, really doesn't work when you have a lot of intermittent generation. Uh, and wholesale markets are gonna have to adapt to that. Uh, investment to meet deep decarbonization commission, commitments is now a bigger challenge, especially in the absence in the US of any coherent national climate policy and limited use of carbon prices in the US. Uh, in the future, the distribution of wholesale prices is gonna change rather dramatically with many more hours of zero and very low prices uh, and a few hours of uh, very high prices. Uh, and this is gonna affect the, the generation of, of quasi rents that uh, are gonna to help to pay for capital. And, I, and, and, and that's, that's going to be a bigger challenge even than it is now. On top of that, uh, uh, state governments and the federal government are, are making mandates uh, to sign long-term contracts for wind and, uh, and solar and storage, uh, which are, are not, not market-based in any sense, but must be integrated into the markets. And then retail rate designs uh, need to change to better link retail and wholesale prices. Uh, to make demand more responsive to, uh, to both high prices and low prices, to make it more flexible. Uh, and, and this is necessary both for efficiency reasons, but also to support uh, decarbonization goals through electrification uh, in transportation uh, and, in, uh, and in buildings. And, and let me conclude and come back to, to transmission. 
Uh, the, the best wind and solar resources in the US are not located where the bulk of the legacy fossil generators are, nor where their supporting transmission infrastructure is located, nor where the load is. So in, in the US, the best wind resources are here in the middle of the country uh, and offshore here, and in some locations in upstate New York and uh, far into Maine. The best solar resources are down here in the Southwest. There are excellent wind resources off the coast of California, but it's deep. Uh, and to exploit those, uh, uh, the developments in floating wind turbines are gonna be required. Uh, the challenge is how do we access uh, and fully integrate uh, investments uh, in new generation and wind and solar at the, at the best uh, sites where the costs will be lower. And the answer is we need significant investment in transmission uh, to access these sites uh, and to expand the geographic market areas so that they can be uh, better utilized and exploited. Uh, and uh, I think that that is the challenge everywhere. Uh, I, I believe we're behind Europe uh, on this score, uh, but people are beginning to, to pay attention to it. And finally, I just note that from a from a resource planning perspective and modeling for reliability, uh, the old system of forecasting peak demand and uh, uh, forecasting uh, generation availability, that's really got to go out the door with systems uh, dominated by, by wind and, uh, and, and solar and, and storage and uh, increasingly uh, weather sensitive demand as, uh, uh, as buildings in particular are, uh, are electrified. And here, new probabilistic models for, uh, for assessing resource adequacy and reliability are going to be uh, necessary. A lot of progress on this has been made, in, especially in California, but also in PJM. Uh, but there's still a lot to do. And uh, I look forward to questions and comments. Thank you.